When the last glow drifts away from the big house at Michigan, it's a good time to have a seat and listen. Here, Yost, Kipke, Wessler. And in your mind's eye, see the lads who wore the colors. Harmon, who played both ways all the way to a Heisman Trophy and got a standing ovation once at the Horseshoe. The Michigan football team is within sight of the summit of their mountain. Their journey inspiration in part from those who have climbed the world's highest mountain. But when you venture into the biggest house in football, you better come prepared lest ye perish at the hands of the big burly resident. For this is a house of history, a house of pride and tradition. Hail to the victor's valiant, hail to the conquering heroes. The touchdown, Wolverine! Touchdown, Michigan! Touchdown, Michigan! Michigan. Touchdown, Michigan. It's touchdown, Michigan. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. Working with us today is our commentator and analyst, Ara Parsigian. Now the Michigan Wolverines are assembled in the tunnel and the crowd is coming to its feet. And when the Wolves come onto the field, you'll hear a roar that'll knock pine cones out of trees 50 miles away. Hello again, I'm Keith Jackson, and I think this game has everything. These teams represent two of the finest universities in the nation, backed by loyal legions, and I mean legions, millions of fans. For Bo Beckler today, this will be his 200th game as a head coach at the college level. For Jerry Faust of Notre Dame, this will be his second game as a head college football coach. Just about as much drama packed into an afternoon of college football as you could possibly hope to have. The Michigan Wolverines not yet coming out of the locker room. It was 50 years ago in a football game between these two teams, which Michigan won 10 to 6, that a young man named Jerry Ford, Gerald Ford, played at center and played in that ball game. And handling the broadcast back to WHO in Des Moines for Iowa was a young man named Dutch Reagan, known as Dutch in those days seems incredible that it was 50 years ago that two men involved in this matchup between these two teams would eventually go on to become presidents of the United States. Now when a coach calls his team back from the lazy hazy days of summer he usually has something in mind, a motivator and when Bo Schembechler welcomed his Wolverines back for the fall practice he reminded them in strident tones that they had finished with 10 wins and second in the national polls last year but they had not won the conference championship and by thunder they would do that this year that has been a constant theme for Michigan and Bob Greasy do we expect anything today other than a close tough knock them down belly up football game I think that's what you're going to see and that's what you're going to get hello again everybody I'm Keith Jackson this is one of those games that echo forever this is a game that reaches across generations that emphasizes the passion of partisanship this is a game where players make the big plays like 1993 when Mercury Hayes made this one for Michigan that helped produce a Wolverine win and took away the Rose Bowl from the Buckeyes and last year when Tim Biaka Batuka carried 37 times for 314 yards and the Buckeyes undefeated season was gone and so was the Rose Bowl. Hello again everybody and welcome. This is one of those games that matters mightily in college football especially since it is on the second Saturday in November. And these are elements that will be impacted by what happens here today. They include the Big Ten Conference Championship, the Rose Bowl, a possible invitation to an Alliance Bowl, the National Championship, and the Heisman Trophy. Now if that doesn't whet your appetite, you're watching the wrong channel. It has always been of paramount importance in Big Ten football to win the conference championship. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, and welcome to the Big House in Ann Arbor. If it is still so that a Big Ten football team wants that conference title more than any national championship, then we should have ourselves a cracking good game today in Ann Arbor. It was on a day like this, in a place like this, that I first met Walter Mitty, that purveyor of those golden moments that last a lifetime in the game of college football. Of course, it might last longer 
if it happened in a game between the Buckeyes and the Wolverines. You're in for quite a day, folks. The music, the sound, the ambiance of a college football game never more pronounced than here in this big, big old open called Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. But now the greeting for the Wolverines at home. to have deep roots, and it does. 117 years of growth, 764 wins, most by any Division 1A team. This is Michigan. sign and the band roaring in the crowd of 100,000 plus and the blue skies of late September. Pretty good setting for what we're about to see. Carr said in a good pooch punter you wanted to be a bad kicker. Well that's ugly. That'll work. And it's going right to the corner. Look at this. Out of bounds at the four yard line. <laughs> oh there'll be some ragged around the fireplace at Christmas. <laughs> Unbelievable that they would come down to this. They had a shot at it. Yeah, watch Look at the, the receiver in the there. back. Yes. Just not quite. I don't think my, I could have handled that one. I don't <laughs> not, think you could have either. <laughs> Clarence Williams' grandmother could have scored that one. So Michigan showed you a little razzle-dazzle stuff. Four things that Charles Woodson can do. That thump you just heard, that was Bo Schembechler fainting. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> But you know, Prater, and the last time Brian Greasy ran that far, his dad was chasing him with a stick. With the oxygen. <laughs> Frank Beckman, who is the broadcaster for the Michigan team, came in for the game and said, what do you think? And I said what I thought. And now I've decided I don't know a damn thing about anything. <laughs> I promised him. Whoa. Trophy presentation is coming up. The MVP in today's ball game. Ah, uh, you want to know who it is? I'm standing alongside his proud daddy. Quarterback Brian Greasy of Michigan. <laughs> what a year he's had. Changed his whole life. You got lost, me. <laughs> I don't blame you. You want to cry, you go ahead. I'll hold you up. That's Shea Greasy. You guys got me crying. <laughs> well, I'm kind of getting sick and tired of this. For every place we go. <laughs> They take you down on the field and they're giving you rocking chairs from Penn State and honorary membership to the press box at Iowa. You got the best food in college football over there. Everywhere we go, they just high-fiving you and making the rest of us well, just fun. feel like we're carrying your bags, which we do. <laughs> well, if I could learn how to stay composed and but I can't because I love these people and uh, I've had nothing but fun. You've probably been here more than any other place in college football, haven't you? Yep. Over I the years? So. Yep. It's been great. This week's Marriott moment features the work of another great Michigan defense, 1993. They welcome Penn State to the Big Ten with an old-fashioned goal line stand into the third quarter. First and goal at the Michigan one. Two sneaks by Collins. Two slams by Carter. Nothing. And the Wolverines hold on for a 21-13 win in the first meeting between these two fabled universities. Tim Williams in the punt. Averaging just...
just under 38 on 44 kicks this year. Nice high kick, got a little wind under it. And it runs Howard back up. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. One man. Goodbye. Hello, Heisman. Leach. Brown back to throw it again. Same thing. Callaway touchdown. Wheatley finds a hole. He's gone. Touchdown. Michigan is right there in third position right now. But Jared Bunch. Jared Bunch. That'll do it for Michigan. Horan comes up now. He's going to blitz. And they pick him up. And the pass completes to Carter. Carter shakes one. Gets away from another. Touchdown, Michigan. Reverse. Nope. Going to throw it. Howard's down there. Buckley's with it. Starting this year, four of them were gone to the NFL. Pressure coming, Collins gets it away, going into the corner with it, it is caught! Touchdown, Mercury Hayes! Here comes a little blitz. Blitz is picked up, though, and the pass thrown to Edwards. Touchdown! And uh, that's Armstrong going in motion. Ball is pitched back to Rick Rogers. Touchdown! And Parchinko is in there replacing Denson. And it is Dreisbach. Oh, yeah. He's got Williams wide open and he drops it softly into his hands. And Clarence Williams will score. Touchdown, Wolverine. The freshman Anthony Thomas comes in as the deep back replacing Chris Howard, who may still be a little bit tender. Thomas gets the ball going outside. Got good speed. Head at the corner. Touchdown, Michigan. The ball is on the 37-yard line. We're at second down and seven now. Greasy back to throw. Down the middle, wide open. It's Woodson. Touchdown, Michigan. Snap is low, but he gets it out all right. Oh, my goodness, look at this. <laughs> he runs Woodson all the way back to the 22-yard line. Woodson's got one block. Back goes Jackson. And he's got a problem. Still struggling, now throws it in. It's accurate. It's right back to Andre Rutgers. And Rutgers will score a touchdown. Oh, that could be a will breaker. Thomas is back in. The big back. Brian play action. Throws. He's got two men open. Touchdown. His first pass drilled to Ty Street. He's wide open and gone for a touchdown. <laughs> Give it to Perry. Up the middle he goes. To the outside. A foot race to the corner. Touchdown. I don't think you realize what an impact you've had on college football. You've been our greatest ambassador. And I just want to say for all of these people out here, and all the people on ABC, we really appreciate all the things that you've done for college football and wish you the very best in your retirement. Nobody's had more fun.